A human among humans. We have an amazing human with us. Want to introduce yourself again? Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Rod Chalberg, and I'm from Bangor, Maine. And I'm your host, Michael Coran. This is the second part of, I guess I would call it the, the love miracles that Rod has experienced. He is a doctor working in the, worked in the emergency room, and he's going to share some of his, his really sacred experiences with us. So, after the crash and burn experience... And tell our new audience, getting divorced and losing oh, custody of your children. So quickly, I lost custody of my children, and um, I, I lost my home, um, just about everything, and, and, and I, I had contemplated suicide. And, and Christ guided me out of that. And then I started studying A Course in Miracles very vigorously. Now an interesting thing started to happen in the emergency room. Christ decided to come and, and become a parent to me. So I could write a whole book on all of the ways Christ would come to me, but I'm just gonna give you a couple stories. Um, I could always start to first feel the presence of Christ like a touch, like you feel a touch. And the peace would emanate from me into a trauma scene and um, everybody would get calm and a lot of times the patients would survive. So I had a 45 year old lady come in who was unresponsive. I have no information. She was at work, she collapsed and that was it. So here you go doctor. So we're getting her ready, and, and I touched the lady's foot, and Christ said to me, she has Tylenol poisoning. Now, Tylenol poisoning is rare, and why would you order a Tylenol level? You think she probably had a heart attack or a stroke, but I didn't, I didn't, I, I ordered Tylenol. It turned out she did in fact have Tylenol poisoning. You ordered a Tylenol test. Yes. I, I did that, yes, a Tylenol test, and it came back critically high, and, and then Christ gave me the antidote. And he literally spoke into, into my ear that, do this, she has Tylenol poisoning. My nurses thought I was nuts. And what did you do? Well, um, I didn't even examine the patient. I probably shouldn't say that, but I just quick ran and got the antidote, gave it to her, and saved her life. Without that antidote in the right time period, you die within three days. And what is days. the antidote for Tylenol? Uh, mucomist and, yeah, mucomist, um, boy, it's been a while, mucomist. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that saved her life. She went home three days later. I had a lady come in and she was in full cardiac arrest. This was the big turning point of my life in spirituality. An 80 year old lady came in and I coded her for 20 minutes with no heart rhythm. She was flatline. And after 20 minutes, I called the code and I pronounced her dead. And, and as I said in an earlier part, I like to pray for my patients. I consider it my last act. And I decided after reading A Course in Miracles, what if I asked Christ to come and take this lady home? What would happen? In that instant, the entire room turned white with a brilliant white light and scintillation, I saw the white aura of the lady in front of me very clearly, and Christ appeared as a red aura, kind of a bead cloud. And Christ came to this lady, picked her up, she looked at me and she smiled and said, thank you. And she drifted off against my right vision and two bright gold doors opened and these white arms came out and brought them home. And that process has happened now with every single death. And I have attended hundreds of deaths, okay. not just one or two. This is- I, mean, I love you around when I die? I will make you very comfortable. Wow, what do you mean? This is... I do not believe in pain and fear. I believe in being comfortable. Now, two questions. Mm -hmm. When you, you told us, you can see it on uh, will be on YouTube. You can. You told us how we could float by slowing our breathing, mm -hmm. and float out of our bodies. Is there a way 
for us to invite this Christ energy into our lives? I, I always find I have to ask first. Christ will not come. You have free will. And, and, and I notice that when I put my hand over my heart and I say, I am, I am. That's who you truly are. You are an individualized expression of Christ, of God, of pure consciousness. I am, and Christ always comes. And it's, it's practice, I suppose. Oh, that, well, thank you for this. Uh, I couldn't even call it a tip. Thank you for this skill. So, so put your hand on your heart. Yes. I am. I am. And then just slow your breathing down and relax. You have mm. to relax into Christ. Now, the next question, some people, even with all this spectacular sharing, might be skeptical. One, they might ask, how do we know it's Christ? And not, not a not not schizophrenia, or maybe not even maybe it's um, a vivid imagination. Maybe it's another wonderful. It, maybe it's Allah or or Yahweh or. But what if they're all the same? Okay. I mean, God is one. So it's just, it's so that people can do this in other religious traditions. You certainly can. They can and say, God comes to me. A Native American could have a, exactly. a, a great spirit. And the way you know, it, it, there is no shadow of a doubt. There is no thinking. Wow, I can feel it now. There is no thinking. I can put my hand here oh, good. and just say, oh, I can feel that right there. Yeah, I can feel it too. You see? Jeez. And then you can go, this is how I love to touch patients with the stethoscope here, but you can feel the energy going right through there. Yes. And and, and yours is very pretty. It's red. Oh, thanks. Right here. And so you know, there is no doubt in your mind. Gee. There is no doubt. And, I do feel blessed. And, and you can just say, you could put a gun to my head. I will not change my mind. I absolutely know. So another story, a two-year-old infant came in in respiratory distress and just in diapers, sitting on mom's lap. I was asked to see the baby and uh, I was looking at the chest x-ray and the baby died. The baby just leaned forward and, and died. And Christ immediately said to me, as I, as I watched the white aura of the baby leave, he said, put your hand on the baby's back. And, and the baby was thinking, shall I leave this world? And Christ said, stay, little one. Oh, good. And the baby aura came back, and we fully resuscitated and saved the child's life. Mm. So those are, I could fill this, I could fill you up with a week of stories of, of miracles. And you have other topics that you wanted I, to get I to. I do. This, I the, do. The next one is? Um, I think I was going to talk a little bit about galaxy walks, but that was about mind expansion and more astral projection, going beyond the galaxy, going beyond the ego mind and being pulled by Christ into heaven. Mm. And what is that like when you become a pure thought of awareness of love? And all you see is a brilliant white sphere. You feel tremendous love and peace. From that experience, then it took me getting through my Catholic beliefs of a judgmental God that I had to appease and trusting Christ to say, do you want to meet God? And, and I finally let go all my concepts and surrendered and said, yes, I want to meet God. Now that, I can't explain to you. I can't give you enough words. It's like, if you've never tasted an orange, how can I tell you what an orange tastes like? So God is pure love. You completely dissolve. All thought stops. And your mind expands beyond, I can't even say what. Um, and it, it, it is such pure bliss, awe, rapture, 
and, and to feel that total oneness that, okay, I'm not talking about a concept of a man-made God anymore, like a Christian God that's good and bad, a God has duality. This is, you are a pure being of light. You are a pure being of love. You are a pure being of thought in the mind of God. That is who you really are. And God says, welcome home, my child. And he embraces you. And I'm ready to go. <laughs> and he wanted to talk about healing, too, I believe. Healing. So after I do this, God has asked me, he said, I need, I, God does not speak human, right? So he has intermediaries like Christ, like me, like prophets and saints that come and speak on his behalf. And so um, I said, I will stay and, and help heal the world. And what I like to do is be with God. And then what happens is this tremendous, beautiful white light comes out of my heart area. And, and, and I see the earth as, as a gray orb on the background of, of kind of a gray. And this white light is like liquid love and it just washes the earth clean. And it just, the, the, the dirt drips off, the, all the hatred, all the anger, all everything. It's just pure white light. And then I know for just a second, and I absolutely know this, not a single death has occurred on this planet. And I know that. At that moment. At that moment. It might be one or two seconds, but I know that. And is there a way we can invite this into our lives? Again, it's it's getting quiet. You know, um, I always find, for me, meditation works the best. Um, there's other methods to quiet the ego mind. Um, and then you just sit back and ask, God, what would you like me to do? Wow. I'm, I'm going to step aside and God's going to say thank you. How about if we bless the world? And every time you smile, right now you're smiling and you are expressing Christ. Wow. Every single smile. Every time you frown, you're expressing ego, negativity. So I'm gonna smile. And, and let, let me bless the world with that. Th then um, there's people that have been hurt in this world. And what I do is, is I've been asked to come in. And um, I don't use magic pills. I don't raise the dead. I don't do magic tricks or anything like that. Instead, I connect. I find it very easy now to connect with God as a pure white uh, light, we, we are one. And then, let's say you believe you have cancer. I've had three cancers this last 10 years. Yeah, I've had three cancers too. Yeah, I'm going for the gold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give you that, up. I'm gonna let you win. All right. <laughs> um, but cancer is nothing more than darkness, if you look at it that way. And what is God? God is light. So all I do is look at you and bring you light. And I hold you in that light. Yeah. The will, if you're willing to accept that light, sure. it heals. I want to also accept darkness. Because I think, uh, at least for me, God is one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and if we, I mean, stars are out all the time. Mm -hmm. But we only see them when it's dark. Mm -hmm. We the stars need the darkness. Yeah. So they're they're like um, a mandala. Light and dark need each other. Yeah. Or if we didn't have night, we wouldn't appreciate sunrise, sunset. Right. So I want both. I'm greedy. You're, a, you're less greedy than me. That's all I, right. I want a god of darkness as well as a god of light. So, and believe it's this, as you're saying about oneness, God is one. God is. A God of darkness and a God of light. God is. God is. And God is growing. Yes. So he's, does your God grow and learn? Does he make mistakes and say, okay, I'm going to... No. No? No. He, he's just, it's just perfect 
for me, perfect white light. So, oh, so, so it doesn't include darkness as it does for me. Mm -mm. And so all of these horrors in the world are, for me, they're part of God. God has to learn, as I've had to, to integrate my different parts, mm -hmm. get, get them to get along. But for you, the torture, starvation, uh, wars mm -hmm. are not God for you. No. Oh, and, and for me, they're part of God. I see you. But why would, why would this great light let this happen? Well, because you have free will. Now, let, now, now just hear me out. I am. Your heart is here. Thank you. It's beautiful. Oh. And you have put a lampshade over that light called a body, an ego. I like my and, body. Is my body and, part and of light? And that's great. Isn't my ego part of light too? No. No? No. Ego is. I a, thought God is one. E ego is a thought. But God is thoughts too. I, so I, so I'm, I love what you're saying, but I want to even, I'm greedier than you. I want a larger <laughs> oneness that includes my ego. These it, people here, as egoless as they are in our audience, they also, if you don't mind me saying it, have beautiful egos too. Yes. I've loved your egos. I think you might not have got here if your egos didn't guide you to the studio. Right. So I'm, I want an all-embracing God. I, I really want God to be one, including egos, thoughts, illusions, dreams. Dreams, yes? Yeah, no. No? Okay, so we, so that's okay. It, I'm so blessed by him being here. We can agree to disagree. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, when somebody is acting in, in a violent, hurtful manner, I look at them as, it, as having a shade over them and they're, they have a cry for love. They're so covered in darkness. Yes. They don't know how to get to God. I am not going to condemn them. I am going to help them brighten their light. So they put these lampshades on. Yes. I have a 100 watt bulb, they've got a 7 watt bulb. And and I say, hmm, I'm going to give you love and take these lampshades off. And all of a sudden they're 50 watt, all of a sudden they're 100 watt. And they go, I don't need to do this anymore. You see? And, and suddenly I get to see God, who I truly am. I am an individualized Christ consciousness. And you're doing a great job of it. And, and, and that's, yes. that's what I look at. The body's temporary. Oh, I see. That, oh. That, oh. Oh, if we have a minute. We have more. We have nine minutes. Um, and we, this is... Okay, so we'll talk about death and dying. Oh, yes. That, you're an expert at that. Okay, I'm going to give up. And by the way... I, I always tell people, you know, I was a hospice doctor. So when you look at my numbers and see how many people have died because of me, you know, Dr. Chalbert, hmm, 500 deaths. I don't think I'm going to see this guy, you know. They well, I would. Well, but, you know, when you look at the data. Oh, it, I want you there. Yeah. So um, in, in this book that I've, I've, I've written down, I finally got the courage with the help of my friends when God calls, say yes. It's about my experiences. Yes. And I go into detail about a lot of this. And you're welcome to agree or disagree and, and take what you can. Um, so the first lady that, that, that passed away asked me, well, what is it like to die? Okay, that's a heck of a question. It's a great question. She and, just had a lot of trust in you. And, she, and I explained to her how the, the, the four stages are, first there's the... You run out of fuel because you're going to burn your fat and oil and muscle. Then you're going to get dehydrated. Then you're going to build up with acid. And then you're going to stop because the acid is, is a poison. And I am going to use medicine as a hospice doctor. I'm going to take all your pain and all your fear away. But I give you just enough so you can talk to your friends. Just enough of what? Medicine. Oh. So Anna's got stage four pan pancreatic cancer. It took her four months uh, before she passed away. And she had the smoothest glide. It was just, there was no fear, no agitation. What was interesting is the day before she died, 
her daughter brought in um, a vase with variegated tulips. The tops of the tulips were white, the bottom were red, and they were all closed. And she had been unresponsive for several days. On that Friday, she was lucid, totally lucid with my medicines, which is not possible because I was, she was in a lot of pain at that point. She was lucid, she talked to her family, she said, I love you, I've been so happy to have you be with me. And she said, it's time to let me go. Please let me go, I wanna go home. And for two hours, and, and then she closed her eyes and died the following day. Now during that time, all the tulips opened up. Mm -hmm. Christ is red, she's white, and they opened up. And that Saturday, I, I saw Anna with Christ's arm around her, mm -hmm. guiding her home. And I was filled with such love and such compassion and such joy. And, and I, I, I look, can I, just, can, I, can I just look at heaven for just a minute? And they always shut the doors, but... Who shut the door? I don't know. Somebody's always shut the door. Oh, so you couldn't get a look? No, I, I just see. like, can I just look? But, so she had a, a beautiful transition. Other people, like Betty, had had tremendous fear of dying because she said, I wasn't good enough, I made mistakes. And so, God is not going to accept me. I'm going to be in purgatory or hell. And And God wrote a beautiful poem to her called Innocence. And he explained to her, and I talked to her, holding her hand at the bedside. This is God talking. Listen. And she listened to it. It was all about love and forgiveness. You've done nothing wrong. And then a week later, she just let go, and it was so peaceful. So, well, I've done many things wrong. So what, how, do, how does that work? With, I mean, many of us feel we've done lots wrong, right? Right. And we're right, yes? Well, like burning down the barn. So Roger was an alcoholic, beat up his family, was in jail, had lots of problems. And I went to his house late winter night and he was crying. And he said, I have done so many things wrong. I, I have hurt people. I tried the best I could. And, and I held his hand because I realized that if Roger can't let go of this fear and this anger, he's going to recycle and recycle. And I said, don't you want to go home? So I, I invited Christ again. I invited Christ into there. And I said, repeat after me. I, Roger, forgive myself and I forgive others. Yum. And God's voice came through me. And it's called Roger's Prayer. Yeah. And God said, you have come to this world, you have lived this life, it's a, you know, it's a dream because it's not God, and God forgave him and said, come home to me. So by asking, that love came through, his wife was with us, and she said, he totally changed, he forgave himself, and she said, I fell in love with this man that I fell in love with 30 years ago. He is the man I chose. And then a year later, his son, who was just like, oh, my dad, he was, he was so mean. He laid in bed, and Roger's spirit came to him. And he offered love and forgiveness, and his son broke down and goes, it's gone. Mm. And I see my dad as God sees you, which is love. So as, at least as I understand you from my perspective, we, we, it's great for people to see they've done wrong because that gives them an opportunity both to ask and receive forgiveness and learn from their mistakes. To and, and it's exactly, it's a go home free card. Yes, that's, I, I actually understand God that way, learning yes. from his and her mistakes. And so... We have two minutes. Okay. It's time flies when you when okay. you're having wisdom. Okay. She would, so would you like? I what have, would you like to say to the? I want. I would love. In the third part of this book, there are poems where God is talking to you and saying, "I love you." 
Can I read a poem? Yes. I, I, I know that's not... We have people calling, but we're not... We're going to... Oh. No, but we, we need to hear this poem. We love you for calling and watching. I'm sorry we can't take the phone call now. So, I'm sorry, folks. Um, it's called... There's multiple poems in this little book, and it's called Holy Child of Mine. It says, Holy Child of Mine, feel my love for you there in your heart. Feel my loving touch and know how much I love you. You are my holy child, forever pure in your heart, innocent as a newborn child, fresh as fallen snow. How I love you, my holy child. I am filled with love and joy for you. Forever pure in this love are you a being of light. Look into your mind and see that this so. This is my will for you. Let my peace descend upon you. Then let my love shine away the darkness of separation in your mind and you will be sanctified. For this, I extend my love and gratitude to you because now I too am whole and complete. So remember my love and let my grace flow into your life. You are my holy child. Inseparably forever in this love we stand. I will bless you and keep you safe. You are a part of me and I am a part of you. In joy and peace, we rest in my love, all is well. Oh my. That's God's message, is that please wake up and remember me. You are a thought of love in my heart. Well, thank you so much, Rod. Oh, thank I'm you. very moved. I feel God's presence. Thank you for joining us.